It's the 27th of July, 2008. Istanbul's district of Gungun. Right at the heart of the hustle and bustle. Smiling faces, children laughing. Mothers rejoicing all under the usual unpredictability of the Bosphorus's gleaming sun. But what started as a gloriously mundane day was about to end in a massacre, where laughs turned into cries and people turned into ashes. Two bombs simultaneously go off in trash cans, killing 17 people, five children, and 154 wounded. An all too familiar scene in a world driven by fear and where the weak prey on the defenseless. And the man behind it, a badly kept secret. A man with a verified Twitter account, praised as a leader of a so-called liberation movement, who uses terror to make a point. In our part of the world, we say a teacher is like a prophet. He has a message to pass on. In this case though, the message was death, and the man conveying it is none other than Abdullah Utsalan's spiritual son, Farhat Abdel Shaheen, but you may know him as Muslim Kobani. Playing God on earth, Kobani's life story is one filled with injustice, pain and suffering. And for what cause? We'll get to that later. Kobani cost the life of 313 Turkish security forces, honorable men and women whose sole duty and purpose was to protect and serve their people. He has also taken the life of five civilians during attacks to 29 police stations between 1991 and 1995. His preferred modus operandi, a method all too familiar to our fellow audience, suicide, recruiting the desperate and the sadistic to carry out self-sacrificial bombing to reign terror over those that will not bow down to terror. What happened in Gungur is a recurring phenomenon. On the 16th of July, 2005, in the city of Izmir, home to some of the world's greatest civilizations, the uncivilized came again. This time it was a minibus in what is known as the Women's Sea. Six were killed. And as the numbers keep increasing and the souls keep leaving, remember that even the most basic principle of war is broken. It is no longer security forces or police officers. It's now women and children. Our sisters, our mothers, our wives. But this is not a war. It's not two armies or not two countries. This is simply terrorism, a vile means to legitimize a vile end. Something that the families of innocents like Tana Whelan and British tourist Helen Pulho know too well. And their crime, visiting Turkey, daring to have a holiday and trying to enjoy the warmth of the Mediterranean. As we move down to the coast a year later in Antalya, a bomb explodes by the main square. Four people were killed and 87 people wounded. In southeastern Turkey, Muslim attacks again 17 were killed, 8 were wounded in a rocket attack on a minibus in 1996 in Çukurca Hakkari. October 5, 1993, 35 people were killed, 10 were wounded when Muslims posse set a fire to 22 homes in villages in southeastern Turkey. The victims of both attacks are all Kurds. In 20th of August 2008, 13 policemen fall victim to another treacherous suicide bomb. Are you still keeping count? Because if you're not, this last incident will change statistics into a much harsher reality of our future generations unable to enjoy the very mere privilege of being safe and claiming their right to a better future. On the 20th of September, 2011, primary school students cut their lesson short as a bomb explodes across the road and turns their world upside down. Education turned into death and childhood turned into a PTSD-driven tragedy. Five are killed and 34 wounded. These are not all the cases, not even close. These are not all the dead, and perhaps we would need much longer to go through it all. But facts are facts, and today, in 2019, the man who indiscriminately kills wives, mothers, fathers, men in uniform and children is now allowed to flourish again at the cost of our people, our nation, and humanity at large. At a time when our partners in the United States have successfully ended their reign over Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the question is, is Kobani not the same? Is the concept of life and death not measured in the same way? Is this not terrorism? Is this not an existential threat? And most importantly, when does this end?